Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for a cheeky bonus review of a cheeky bonus model. This is none other than the Citadel Miniatures 30th store anniversary celebration miniature, the Space Marines Primaris Captain with Power Fist. This is a cheeky review because this isn't actually my model, this is a friend's and uh, he's loaned it to me for doing a quick review of it. So I won't be building this, I'm just going to be reviewing it. But I'm going to be doing two things in this review. One of which is taking a look at this model and have a little journey around the pretty coloured packaging. And secondly, I'm just going to speculate a little bit about the direction of travel with regards to the Space Marine Army lists. And I think we can generally apply this more widely to units and the new codices and how the rules may start to shape up because it's interesting. Right, so let's have a look then. Now, so the first thing about this model is it's in this very attractive packet or little box and there's lots of gold on black and then there's the dude himself armed with a plasma pistol, a power fist, an iron halo and a cape of studliness. And got some nice trim, got another view, got some detail call outs, got this little relic box, here's a tabard and we get the option of a helmeted head as well as the unhelmeted head. It's a nice model, a bit there, a bit more goldness there, and it's made in the UK, good to see. So that's what we get. This was available in store only at Games Workshop, but it's a Primaris Marine, and let's have a look. And this for me is a one to have got if you're only going to buy one of the two anniversary models. So there's this Captain and then also the Primaris Veteran Sergeant. I guess the Veteran Sergeant has one advantage over this guy in that if you don't like capes, he's clearly the guy for you. Right, let's see what I've got. So we've got a tray, we've got, we've got a tray of the model and a little rules pamphlet. And probably some instructions, so we'll do that. And we'll pull that in the background to look attractive. Right. So, shall we do... No, what we're going to do is we'll do rules pamphlet second. We're going to do miniature first. This is a similar sort of setup to what I first saw with the Imperial Space Marine 30, which came out last year. So we get the miniature and a standard Citadel 40mm base. A little sheet of Ultramarine transfers to add to most players' collections of Ultramarine transfers I'll never use. And then the tray itself. Right, let us have a look at this model to see what it looks like and also appraise the quality. This is one of these monopose models. In the world of monopose models, this is completely monopose without some cutting, slicing, slashing and conversion work because we've got the arms already attached. So there's not even the chance to repose those with just a little bit of tweaking. You're doing some fairly hefty conversion work. So get his helmet there, quite neat with a proper head of hair. Rogal Dawn would have approved. That's his, oh I see, so that's one of his lower greave armours. And that's the other foot there. Let's take a look at the torso. So he's got Terminator on us, he's got this power fist, nice classic style power fist. A somewhat beefed up plasma pistol, although as we'll find out this is no harder hitting than a standard plasma pistol, although that's a slight contradiction in terms. And we've got all sorts of details, we've got his little bolt shell for some reason, we've got his dangly bit. We've got his sort of uh, tabard strips and this little relic box thing. An Aquila on his Mark 10 armor. He sort of ropes for his cloak. Then his backpacks. Got this eagle device on the top. Reminds me a bit of various previous characters we've had. A couple of purity seals, another eagle here. Reminds me of Nathaniel Garrow, the Forge World model, a little bit. Don't know why. Then we have a shoulder pad with a nice eagle on it. This eagle reminds me of the eagle that was on the 25th anniversary Finecast model uh, for Warmer 40,000. So I think they've, the sculptor's done a little bit of a nod to that design there. So that's nice to see and I'd, I'd not actually expected that. Then we've got a helmet, which has got a laurel wreath on. Very ultramarine -y. Dead easy to take that off if you don't like it. You can cut this peg away and then you can pose a head in any orientation you want. Although you need to be careful 
not to make him look like a doofus because of the poses of his arm or the way the arms are posed. And then we've got kind of like the torso cum cape. So he's got this big pistol holster. I don't know if that's one of those bigger pistols or is that supposed to be his plasma pistol holster with a purity seal on it? A leg, some hips and a cape. So the conversion minded amongst you, if you want to be rid of this cape, you have got some serious rebuild work to do. You know, that is, it's, it's, that, that's a hardcore conversion to do if you want to get rid of this cape. So something to be borne in mind there. And then there's this shoulder pad here, which has got this little shield, a couple of tassels, and is otherwise bare. There's no chapter or legion specific heraldry on this model. That's good. Right, let's take a look at the actual molding quality here. Let's take a look. Looks okay on the upper side. You've got a mold line to take away around here, as you can see. It's quite noticeable. Oh, the power glove, power fist. Yeah, you've got more to take got more to take off on the underside there. A fair bit of cleanup work to do on that power cable. A bit hard to get the light on it, I do apologise. You've got a mould seam running down the front of this leg. Reminds me of some of the miniatures from the Dark Imperium box. So that's going to need to go a bit on the back bit. And what's this like? That doesn't... Look like there's much on the torso piece at all. Got one to take off there. I mean, what do I think? That's probably about comparable to some of the models from Dark Imperium. It's not as nicely cast as what I consider to be the top-notch stuff, Spruce A and F. It's not as good as the Reavers, but it's cleverly designed, so there's not much to do. And to be honest, it's a one-off special model. You know, you don't, it doesn't really matter too much. And good to get, as I say, a model with no chapter insignia and the choice of an unhelmeted and a helmeted head. And I guess if you put the unhelmeted head on, you could cut the helmet down to mount on his body. So he's carrying his helmet, which is a good feature. Not bad at all. Now, let's have a look at this little rules pamphlet. Primarize captain with power fist. Read this first, blah, 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 blah. Right, fine. And then we've got the normal, good, quality, attractive looking instructions. That's all very good. You could actually magnetize that head thinking about it. Yeah, you could do if you're very keen. And then we get some rules. So these come in uh, several languages. As a speaker of English, we shall look at this. These essential rules will get your new unit on the battlefield for full rules for this unit. See the codex or index relevant to your army. The rules for the Primaris Captain isn't actually in the index. You get the rules for the Primaris Captain in Gravis Armour, but not the standard captain. So you'd have to undo the points values for the Gravis armor. So I'm not sure how you do that. But the rules are in the codex. You don't get the points values here, but what you do get is the power level and you get the equipment as well. However, as we will come to, it doesn't matter that they don't give you the points values. Hold that thought. He's got a typical Primaris captain profile. It's the same as a standard Astartes or a classic Astartes captain, apart from he gets one more wound and one more attack. But otherwise is no different. He's got exactly the same war gear. Standard plasma pistol, standard power fist, standard frag and crack grenades. Have a look at this. I mean, gosh, the plasma pistol is an absolute beast of gun. Although this supercharge option you would want to be very, very careful with because of this. On hit roll of one, the bearer is slain. So, vumf, six wounds down the swanee, as they say. He does get the right of battle. You can reroll hit rolls made of a one for friendly units within six inches of this model. So that's handy. So that's like the Gravis Captain. Same principle. Very handy ability buffs really well with your troops. And he's got a power level of six. That's kind of like your, what do they call it, free play rules. As long as you've got the Space Marine Codex, and with a bit of creative account in the index, you can actually work out the points values for this unit. In the Codex, you get a Primaris Captain equipped with a bolt rifle, and standard war gear, shall we say, for Primaris, or he's like a captain for the intercessors. And because all the points are now listed separately, you can just go through, top them up, and points value this guy out. And that's quite interesting, that, because is this an indication of how we're going to start to see points values on new units? They publish a codex, which has kind of like all the stuff in it, and then they can release new models. As long as they don't do anything drastically different, create any new units outside of the codex, you buy the model, you get the quick start rules, so you get the, the stats and blah, 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 all that. You get the data sheet, that's it, isn't it? You get the data sheet. If you want to then play match play or anything where you use points, just go back to your relevant codex or index to point value it up and you're away. Interesting. 
I mean, they're still not quite prepared to give you all the information in one box that you need to play with it throughout the game. They're still just sort of like teasing you and, and pulling you into buying the book as well. They're not yet at a point where they'll sell you everything you need to gain this model. So power levels and points values as well as the model itself. They're still wanting you to buy the book and that's an indication of how their commercial models work. But it's encouraging and it's very easy to acquire the points values out of the codex shall we say, and then you don't need to buy it. I hope you've enjoyed this bonus cheeky review, as I call it. Let me know what you think of this model. Have you bought it? Were you going to buy it and you forgot? Interested to hear as always in the comments section. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.